What's up, y'all? Now, I want to address a topic that's been brought to me uh, a few times before, but most recently by my own brother following the Belmont Stakes. Um, and this topic is, how do you get out of a slump? Now, I learned this information. I've got to give credit where credit is due. I learned this information uh, directly from Peyton Manning during an interview on uh, ESPN Sunday Morning Countdown um, several years back. But he gave me the blueprint, and um, I think that that blueprint is going to, uh, uh, it has worked for me. You know, i got to make my own adjustments uh, because I'm dealing with horse racing and not playing quarterback, but also with other issues in life. But I found that uh, his advice plays out pretty solidly um, no matter what you're trying to do. How do you get out of a slump? Whether it's love, whether it's money, whether it's life, accomplishments, goals, whatever it is. How do you get out of a slump? When we've all been there before. We've all been in a slump before. We've all had it to where things are not going our way. Where you trying this and that and the other, and it's the things that you know have worked for you before, but they're not working this time. Here's how you do it. Peyton Manning laid it down for me, and I'm going to share it with you, and I'm going to break it down to how you're going to make it work for you, not only in horse racing, but with other things. And here's what it is, all right? <clears throat> Pay close attention. Get back to basics. Get back to fundamentals. That's it. That's it. That's all. That's what it is. Yeah, I know you were thinking I was going to say something that's... Uh, a lot more profound, probably. But that's one of the most profound things you could probably say. Get back to basics. All right, horse racing. Here's how we're gonna lay it down. At some point in your life, you placed a good bet and you cashed in on it. And it did you well. And you like this. You're like, hey, I can pick a winner of a horse race and make money just for being right. I said some stuff, I was right about it, I put some money on it, I cashed in on it. Everybody loves that feeling. We all love that feeling. You know you love that feeling. If you didn't love that feeling, you wouldn't be watching the video right now, all right? You love the fact that you can see something, you can place your money on the courage of your own convictions, as Stephen A. Smith would say, and you're gonna cash in on it. However, somewhere along the way, you begin thinking that you are a super genius. <clears throat> you start thinking that I can pick the winner of any race at any time, on any track, on the planet, even out of the planet, on the moon, uh, races on Jupiter, which that would be very interesting to see once we got to figure out how to do it. But we, I can pick the winner of anything. Basketball, football, hockey, soccer, tiddlywinks, Monopoly, Clue, sorry. I can pick the winner because I'm just that great of a handicapper. That is not true, my friend. I've thought the same things over my life. You get good, you start winning, and you start playing too many things, and that's what it is. You start playing too much because you think you're too much of a genius. You don't realize that you won your first race <clears throat> off of a place bet. You know what I mean? And you stop getting back to that. You stop, you stop thinking about what, what you did the first time you hit that first trifecta. What was I thinking? What was I doing? How did I see the race? I don't bet trifectas. It's risky. But for some reason, I see something in this race, and it makes me want to bet it. 
So, get back to basics. Get back to fundamentals. What is it that you did in the beginning that made you love it? That made you feel it? That made you, you, you feel that you had that moxie to be able to get things done and you did it and you're like, bah! And you're clowning the competition and you cash that ticket. That's what you gotta get back to. Recapture that emotion. Recapture that emotion of your win. Go back to what it was you thought originally. No one else knows what it was besides you. And that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Only you know how to win for you. So get back to basics. Get back to your fundamentals. And trust me, that is what brings you wins. Now the other thing, and um, this wasn't part of Peyton Manning's strategy, but this strategy has been taught time and time again however it's 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 reiterated and re-educated the wrong way all right the, the strategy is scared money don't win all right scared money does not win but what is scared money some people along the way began to think that scared money means that oh if you ain't playing you're scared. So if you're scared, you ain't gonna win. So you have to be in the game if you're gonna win. All right, now while that is true, you must be in the game if you're going to win. Um, scared money does not mean that you are afraid or not afraid to play. Scared money means that you are playing with money that you are afraid to lose. That's a big difference. Scared money is money that you are playing with that you are afraid to lose. Scared money is money that you are playing with that you are afraid to lose. Scared money is money that you are playing with that you are afraid to lose. I can't say that over and over and over again enough. But if you want to get out of a slump, do not play with the mortgage. Do not play with the big bills. You need to play with an amount of money that you are not afraid to lose. Now, how do you do that? That's a great question. That's a great question because I know a lot of you want to know because you're like, I want to play. I know I can win. But how do I play with money that I'm not afraid to lose? Now, here's how you look at it. There's an entertainment budget, right? Everyone has an entertainment budget, whether they want to admit it or not. You go to the movies, you're never going to get any money back from the movie. You go play miniature golf, hey, unless you're betting the people you're playing with, you're never going to get any money back from playing miniature golf. Okay? You go to Disney World, I guarantee you, you will not make a profit out of going to Disney World. You won't. Not ever. So, if you consider these adventures, these investment adventures at the track as your Disney World, you will consider that you are going to take a certain amount of money that you are going to take to Disney World and you are going to take that instead to your Disney World, which is the track, and you are going to make smart investments in order to bring yourself about more money. However, if you lose such said money that you would have blown at Disney World anyway, I guarantee you this, that you will have more excitement than you will at Disney World, even if you walk out with out anything which is what Disney World guarantees you Disney World guarantees you're gonna blow your whatever $400 or whatever people spend on that I ain't been to Disney World in years but they guarantee you're gonna lose that you go to the track there is no guarantee that you will lose all of that money so you just need to think smart you need to think of it as a business you want to 
spend more on what wins and less on what loses. You know, that's a very complicated game. It's a very complicated script. There's a lot of math involved. However, it doesn't mean that you can't do it because if you're watching this video, you know that you've already done it before. At some point in your life, you walked in and you saw something that you liked and you bet on it and it won and you cashed and you felt like a genius. You know, and this strategy is all about keeping yourself feeling like a genius because life is a gamble. Everything's a gamble. I don't care whether you're working or whether you're gambling or whether you're 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 you're, you're taking a risk to, to you know drive a truck in Iraq. That's a huge gamble, but it had a huge payoff for those that did it. You know what I mean? You know, there's people that decide that they're going to invest a lot of money in college. Hundreds <clears throat> thousands of dollars into college, tens of thousands of dollars, some get into hundreds of thousands of dollars investing into college for the hopes that someday they're going to get a job that will slowly pay this, this, this money back you know, versus uh, the interest and the inflation that you're facing based on what you placed anyway. So it's all a numbers game. The, the way to win any of those numbers, you get back to basics. That's what you do. That's how you get out of a slump. Once you get back to basics, you're going to get a small win. You're going to get a small win. And I guarantee you that small win is going to feel great. All right. I went through a support point in my life, and I'm, I'm going to cut it off after this story. I went to this point in my life, and I was betting Kentucky Derby. All right. <clears throat> I went up to 2003. And uh, funny side was the winner that year. I don't remember who I had, but uh, I don't like to share numbers. But I'm going to do it this time for perspective. Um, from being a little kid, you know, I, I learned to win off bet, betting two dollars a place. All right, that's what I started with. But at this Kentucky Derby, particularly, I put forty-five. I think it was forty-five dollars on these horses. This one to win, that one to place, that one across the board. I got a trifecta over here. I got an exact. I bet a super. I had all this stuff going all over the place, and I swore that I was the genius. It's just gonna pretty much Swiss book the race, and I got it done. And you know what? In the 2004 Kentucky Derby, I didn't cash a single ticket, not one, not one at all. All right, not one. And so, in a, I don't know what other people bet on the races. It, it, to me, you should never tell that, really, unless you're trying to tell a story like me, because that's your business. However, I, I, I took an ass whooping. I learned my lesson. I bet too much, and I thought I was too much of a genius. So I said, next year for the Kentucky Derby, I'm going back to basics. All right, so, moving on. Um... That year in the Belmont Stakes, I did learn my lesson enough that I did have the trifecta because I had Empire Maker with 10 most wanted with Funny Side in there. And I learned my lesson to be more conservative, and that's the only bet I placed in that race. And it came through for a nice lucrative victory. Um, so next year, uh, 2004, I picked in the Kentucky Derby one horse. One horse to win for $2. And I said, that's all I'm betting, that's all I'm picking, that's it. That one horse was Smarty Jones. 